Hi guys, welcome back to Ajwit channel. So today we will be discussing a simple topic that is how does kidney disease affects erythropoiesis? So we are all familiar with the kidney disease and its relation with erythropoiesis. So how are they related? So we will be talking about the kidney functions and erythropoiesis relation in this video. So if you haven't subscribed our channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button. So the moving to the first part that is erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a hormone produced primarily by the kidneys with small amounts made by the liver. So we have heard the name of erythropoietin somewhere else. So erythropoietin plays a key role in the production of RBC which carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. So RBC is produced in the body through several steps from the bone marrow cells. So in the steps, some of the steps are mainly controlled by erythropoietin hormone. So erythropoietin which is also known as erythropoietin hormone or hematopoietin or hemopoietin is actually a glycoprotein cytokine secreted mainly by the kidney in response to cellular hypoxia that will stimulate the red blood cell production. So whenever there is hypoxia, the body will be stimulated. So the blood will stimulate the kidney to secrete more erythropoietin into the blood. That erythropoietin will be carried to the bone marrows and the erythropoiesis happens at an alarmed rate. So this is actually the endothelial cells of peritubular capillaries. These cells are actually producing the erythropoietin. So erythropoietin is actually a glycoprotein and the synonym is hemopoietin secreted by the kidney that is actually the peritubular capillary endothelial cells. So in case of fetus the liver is also producing uh, this hormone that is erythropoietin. Function is actually regulator for RBC production. They are actually the regulators for RBC production. Stimulus is actually hypoxia. So what are the common kidney diseases? The kidney can be affected by various of disease that is happening in the acute kidney injury that is mainly the chronic kidney disease, renal stones, nephrotic syndrome, urinary tract infections, inherited genital congenital disease or chronic poisoning etc. So all these cases the kidney will be damaged. So the cells, what cells? The peri-renal, peritubular capillary endothelial cells. So they will be damaged, right? So what happens? They will not be producing much amount of erythropoietin. So what are the symptoms of kidney disease? That will be, you will be getting uh, like uh, apply pressure while urinating, swelling in leg, angle, feet or the BP problems, vomiting problems, shortness of breath, etc. So you can see this is actually the kidney and the, whenever there is hypoxia, the kidney will produce EPO, pericytes, peritubular cells. They will be producing EPO, erythropoietin and in these steps, the erythropoietin will be acting like a cytokine hormone. So these steps are actually EPO dependent. So what happens if at all kidney has got some disease, the kidney will not be producing EPO. Whenever EPO is not acting at this stage, this stage will not pass out and more erythrocytes will not be produced. That will always lead to anemia. So what happens? Erythropoietin injections are present. So kidney disease, whenever kidney disease is there, erythropoietin will be secreted very less. So that more erythropoiesis will be less. And whenever there is congestive heart failure, the kidney diseases are very common. In that case, the erythropoietin secreted will be very less. That leads to less erythropoiesis and that will lead to anemia. Thank you.